So who should be buying the M4 Pro chip? Should you? Let's talk about it. Welcome back to the channel. So we got a good one today. Now I get asked this question all the time and I, I think it's like at least every week. People say to me, well, I have an M1 or an M2 MacBook Air. Should I be upgrading to the M4 chip or the M4 Pro chip? And obviously, if you haven't been under a rock lately, you don't watch my channel, you know that I got the M4 Pro. This is the Pro chip, Mac Mini sitting right there. And I happen to have an M2 Air right here. So this is the M2 Air right here. This has got 16 gigs of RAM, 512 gigabyte SSD. This obviously has 24 gigs of RAM because that's what it comes with with the Pro version and, and 512 gigabyte SSD as well. So we're going to kind of take a look at these and kind of break these apart. Now, full disclaimer on the video before we start, though, I can't really tell you exactly should you be doing this, should you not be doing this, all right? Because it's going to come down to, obviously, the individual tasks that you're doing on each computer. It's also going to come down to the individual programs that you choose to use. It's also going to come down to the individual features, and I'm going to show you some stuff, and I'm going to show you some examples. The individual features of the program that you're actually using can determine if it's worth it or not. In some cases, it is. In some cases, it is not. So in this video, I'm going to do some video editing tests, and that's only specific to me. Just hold on one second. And, you know, obviously, the, the, this is going to be the M4 Pro Mac Mini versus the M2 Air. So we're going to compare these two direct on doing the exact same video editing tasks. Now, take a step back. Like I said, this is specific to only me, my specific task. My, my workload is going to never be close to anybody else's. I use CapCut for Mac. I use a weird things. It doesn't really matter. I'm just showing you the differences between the two and how kind of convoluted this can actually get. And it's going to hopefully help you on your journey of figuring out if you should actually be upgrading from like an M2 Air to an M4 or an M4 Pro. And it's going to help you along that, that path, right? It's going to give you just one more data point, And then I'm going to show you at the end of the video exactly how you need to think about it so that you can kind of make the determination and hopefully it'll give you some information. Okay, for the very first test here, we're just going to do a syncing of audio and video. And I'm going to show you that here in a second. How fast can it do it? I'm expecting this is going to go really, really quickly, especially with both of these systems. But we're on the M2 MacBook Air with 16 gigs of RAM. So the clip here, let's just check, take a look at the clip here. Let me actually click on this. The clip's about 25.4, and it's about 26 minutes, basically. 26 minute clip here. And we're going to go into here and we're going to bring the audio down. And I'm going to offset the audio just slightly here, just about like that, I guess. Now we're going to go ahead. Well, actually, let's just make it a little bit more. We're going to offset set the audio right to about there. So here's the video and here's the audio for it. And this program does a really good job of syncing the two up. So all we have to do is just go like this and go like that. And then we're going to right click here and then we can go ahead and click on sync audio and or sync video and audio down there. For that, I'm going to, I have a stopwatch ready to go here. So as soon as this actually clicks on this, I'm going to time this to see how long it takes on the M2 MacBook Air. So let me go ahead and do this. So in one, two, three, Let's just see this. It's going to go really quickly here. You can see that it's moving very quickly and it's done. So it took about four seconds, 4.81 seconds only. And that's for the M2 MacBook Air. So I don't think the, uh, the M4 Pro is going to be much of a difference, but let's check it out. All right, so how fast was syncing the exact same video, same conditions, everything was the same on the M4 Pro Mac Mini? It only took three seconds, 3.12 seconds over here. And this one took again, 4.81 seconds. I think that's 35.1, 35.1 or 35.2% faster on the Mac mini. So you can see we're only saving like one and a half seconds for that task. What does that come out to? It's very, very, very small syncing the entire video of audio, but over time, that's going to give you something, right? But that's not a good example because those are so close that would never make a really a difference in my workflow. So there's one example where just it's obviously 35% faster, but just syncing that entire 27 minute clip is only a few seconds difference or a second and a half, and it doesn't make much of a difference. Okay, for this next test, we have the M2 MacBook Air again, and I put three different clips down here, and they all have to be basically stabilized, and there's going to be 58 seconds of total clips here, so combine their 58 seconds right here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select all three of these clips just like this, and what we're going to do is we're going to click Stabilize here in a second to stabilize the clips. If you can see that they're kind of shaky in here, you can't really see, but they're shaky. So I'm going to stabilize these clips here, and we're going to see how long it takes to do all three of those, and I'm going to go ahead and get my stopwatch ready here. So when I click on this over here, Stabilize, we're going to go ahead and come back with the number here. Let me click and let's get going. As you can see, the number over here is actually processing. So it's taking a little bit of time, but it's not, it's actually still moving pretty quickly. So I don't think the M4 Pro, um, you know, obviously the Mac mini is going to be that much faster, but we'll see. So the time here, it's done. I'm going to go ahead and click done there. So we got 15 seconds, 15.55 seconds. So less than 16 seconds to go ahead and stabilize all three of these clips. And that was 58 seconds worth of clips. 
Okay, so now how much is there a difference to stabilize those same three clips right here with the M4 Pro Mac Mini? It actually, it did it in 10 seconds, 10.02, so basically 10 seconds flat. And again, that was 10 seconds flat over here. This one over here, the M2 Air took 15.55 seconds. So once again, this did it in, what is it, 30, about 35.6% faster, this one right here. So you're gaining, you know, 30 to 40% faster on the speeds there. But again, this comes out to, five, you know, this was three clips at once, they're smaller clips. So you might do this a lot across the video, but that's still only five seconds. So while on paper, it looks really, you know, impressive, of, you're saving five seconds. But if you do longer, I mean, I only did, like I said, I think it was a number, you know, a number of seconds. But if you do the entire video, that could become a bigger, you know, minute or two every video, and that can start to add up. For this next test, we're back on the M2 MacBook Air. I have a clip over here that's 11 seconds. I dragged it down into my timeline. And all we're gonna do in this clip, now this is difficult, we're gonna reduce image noise here. Now the reason this is difficult is because it's got basically 12, 11 seconds of 24 frames per second. It's actually got to deal with. So we're gonna see how long this takes. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this, and then as soon as I click it, we'll come back. So in three, two, one, go. All right, I just finished here and it took 22 seconds, basically 22.8 seconds, 22.8 seconds. And this is only 11 second clip. So almost three times, well, twice as much basically, it took twice as long. So we're gonna see if the M4 Pro Mac, Mac Mini over there does a lot better than this. I think it will actually. So 22 seconds, 22.8 seconds. Okay, like I mentioned on the M4 Pro Mac Mini, some of these tasks that they do, that this is one perfect example, some tasks that are built into like video editors and stuff like that, they actually do a better job at doing certain tasks if they have a faster CPU or more GPUs, and this is one of them, right? So this is gonna be basically to reduce image noise, and it's very difficult. So as we saw, the, the Air did it, let me just see here, that 11 second click, it, it took 22 seconds, 22.8 seconds over here. How fast did the M4 Pro do it in? It actually did it in 10.9 seconds, so that actually is less than half. It's actually, what is it? It's 52.19% faster. Um, this one over here is faster than this one over here. So it's over 50% faster. And again, you're saving an, an only 11 second clip, right? That's a very, very small clip that you're actually going to be reducing the noise on. You're saving you know, 12, what is it, 12 seconds or, 12 point, or 11 point something seconds. So this can add up. And let me just show you how. Here we are back to the M2 MacBook Air. Now that last example I showed you wasn't too bad because it was only a cut like 11 second clip. But here's a minute, let's just say you're even gonna do a minute clip. Here's a minute right here. There's a huge difference here. So we're gonna try this now with the, the MacBook Air with just a one minute clip. And you're gonna see the difference between this and the M4 Pro MacBook or Mac Mini in a second. So first let's try the, the MacBook Air here. We're gonna go ahead and click this and I'll report back with whatever it is in a second. Okay, so it just finished this. This is a one minute clip. And again, we just did reduce image noise. So how long did it take to complete that? Two minutes and 17 seconds. So two minutes and 17 seconds. Let's check the M4 Pro Mac Mini now and see what that can do. All right, so even with that one minute clip, how much faster did this do it over here on? So this one over here did it in one minute and three seconds only. So this is the faster M4 here, M4 Pro chip. So this one over here did it in two minutes and 17 seconds, one minute over here and three seconds. That's a, this is 54% faster and that saves you just for a one minute clip, which you could do a whole, let's say I did a 27 minute clip there. This is doing it on a one minute clip, you're saving over a minute in time. So you can imagine that if you did a full video like this, you might be saving 27 minutes and that's a, and that's a massive amount of time. So again, this thing is over, you know, now we're getting 50 something percent faster, not 30% faster, but this is a task that you might actually use for the entire video to get rid of, you know, graininess and stuff like that. If you have something that's inherently built into the video, at least you might be using it for longer periods here. And that's where you start saving more and more time. So this is an opportunity, with, like if you use Use this feature some people may never use it but if you do use it then you got to start thinking that the pro might be better okay we're back to the m2 macbook air with 16 gigs of ram you can see it here and now i put together an entire 27 minute clip sample video in here it's a complete sample video and it's going to go ahead and crunch this so we're going to export this and see how long it takes on the m2 macbook air so we're gonna go up to export up here. Now a couple different things here I'm just gonna leave that name like that it doesn't really matter there we're gonna do 4k bitrate is gonna be recommended Codec is gonna be H.264, MP4, and then 24 frames per second. So I'm gonna export this out and we're gonna time it, and then I'm gonna come back and report the time to you. All right, so finally for that 27 minute clip, how long did it take to basically export the video? And this is gonna be the M4 Pro. This only took nine minutes and seven seconds. Now hear me out for a second. 
that actually shocked me because it's not that much of a difference. So this was nine minutes, seven seconds, and this error over here, M2 error, was 13 minutes and five seconds. So this is a task exporting. It's not gonna be that much of a difference because, again, it's, it has to do with how many, like, um, there's there's a lot of stuff going on behind the scenes with, with Mac computers, the rendering engines and stuff, and they have the same amount of those. Now, if you go with something like the studio, it's gonna be exponentially, it's gonna be, like, a lot faster. But if you go with these type of systems, you're not gonna get that much more speed. We can see that this one right here, this um, M4 Pro right here, is, it ends up being 30 30.3% faster. So 33.3% faster. You save a couple minutes per video. But again, if you're only doing a few videos, it doesn't really matter. But if you're doing a lot, it could matter a lot. But that was a long video and I still only saved. It was a 27 minute clip and I still only saved, what does that come out to? Like four minutes or something. So it wasn't huge. Okay, this next part is a complete estimate, so I don't need comments. I mean, I know people are gonna say this is not accurate. It's just a complete estimate. Take it for the way you want to take it. But I'm just gonna throw out some estimates here to show you about how much I'm saving here. So just based off of this one workload, I, my typical videos are longer, like that 25 minutes, 27 minutes. Sometimes they're shorter, sometimes they're actually longer. Here we go. So I, I figured with doing something like, you know, image stabilization, um, you know, reducing image noise, stuff like that, I do some here, I do some there. I might save, and this is a bare minimum, let's just say I'm saving 15 minutes per video by having this faster computer than this one, just by doing the internal stuff, not exporting, just all the other little stuff creating the video. That, and I do 130 videos a year, believe that or not. That's actually a lot, right? So I'm saving 15 minutes times 130, that's 1,950 minutes I'm saving per year. That's not a ton because that comes out to 32.5 hours. That's not bad though. But now on the exports, I saved about four minutes per export times 130, that comes out to about 8.7 hours. So if I combine the two, that saves me about 41.2 hours a year. Doesn't seem huge, right? Maybe a week's, week's worth of work. But everyone's got their price, right? People want to make money. They have other options to do other things. So my, I always set like, I need to be at least saving like, you know, it's going to save me like 30 bucks an hour my time, right? That's what I think I can make at least that. So I, that's my number I'm going to use here is $30 an hour. So saving, you know, 41.2 hours times $30 an hour, that basically means 1,236 bucks per year. Buying this actually saves me over this. Now I know it's not an exact, it's not like it's actually, I'm making that money, but you get the drift here. So if I keep this three years, like most people would, that would come out to $3,708. Now, with that said, this is a complete bare bones estimate and it's only one specific task, one task that I'm doing, this little video editing task. And there's so much more that is involved in this if you think about it, right? So for example, I do thumbnails. I use video editing um, tools obviously, but then I use photo you know, photo editing as well. Um, I'm transferring files back and forth and this SSD drives a lot faster than this one, like double the speed basically. So when you transfer files, you're saving time there. Um, all the other programs that I use are gonna be a little bit faster, a little bit here, a little bit there. Maybe I'm doing research on AI. The AI is just a little bit faster. So you start seeing how, you know, at a bare minimum, you're starting to save some money here. And uh, that's what you have to kind of start piecing together is like go through your workload and figure out, hey, wait a second, where is this time? What am I doing? And are these tasks really going to save me any time if I get a faster GPU and CPU versus just getting more RAM? So this is where it comes down to, right? So I'm very unique because I do 130 videos a year. And I'm saying 99% of people probably don't do that many videos, right? So if you're somebody that doesn't do what I do and you just basically do browse the internet, do work, you know, maybe some Zoom calls, but you still like Macs, you really don't want to buy a, a computer like this, an M4 Pro chip. I mean, obviously, if you don't have a computer, buy the M4 only. But if you just want to buy a good deal or find a good deal, buy an M2 Air or something like that. Concentrate on the RAM then. If you're not into CPU and GPU, if you don't use that for video editing, it could be things like uh, 3D modeling, um, you know, music production, coding, and stuff like that. If you don't do any of that stuff and you just are a basic, when I say basic, it doesn't mean it doesn't mean you're you're not doing your job or anything. It just means that you don't do those kind of more advanced tasks. That's totally fine. Concentrate on RAM then versus CPU. Don't worry about this Pro chip. In fact, just get an M2 or an M3 with a lot more RAM on it, and the RAM is going to help you a lot more. But then again, we come, let's just loop back for a second. So maybe someone will say, well, I do only 40 videos a year. You're doing 130, so I don't know if I need this either. Well, that's not, you know, you have to just start thinking about it. For example, in my videos, you saw I'm, a lot of my videos are very simple. I just did a quick example, but I don't do a ton of special effects. I don't do masking. I don't do a lot of things that might take a lot of power or GPU power, CPU power. If you're doing 40 videos, but your videos are all into like masking objects, taking out backgrounds, doing very specific things that are CPU and GPU, you know, you could be saving a ton of time by 
by getting a faster computer like this, even though you're doing way less videos. You could be saving, you know, 200, 300, 400 hours a year just by getting something like this with something like this that might struggle more. So you have to really take that into consideration. And that's kind of what I'm trying to get people to think about is like, my example is just one example, but it's, it's every single person out there is so different that it's impossible for me to answer this. So I guess that's what I'm gonna leave you with. If you're somebody that doesn't do any video editing or any coding stuff, or you're not using it for work and stuff, get any, any M series chip here and just get maybe 16 or 24 gigs of RAM and you're gonna enjoy that a lot more than just getting a faster CPU. If you're somebody that does all this kind of work, in most cases, you're gonna be fine with just the M4 chip, like the M4 Mac mini. But if you're somebody that has to use a lot of those like little pieces inside, like masking and like, um, like I said, stabilization and, and all the little things that you do on your videos, but you use it all the time, then you might think about the Pro chip because that's where you're gonna get a little bit more help from it. So we'll wrap up the video. We'll talk to everybody soon. I hope this helps people trying to make that decision, just showing you some real statistics here. Subscribe to the channel. I like to show real statistics versus any type of benchmarks. To me, it means nothing. My, my specific case, though, is completely different than yours, so just keep that in mind, but it's gonna give you one data point. We'll talk to you in the next one. Peace.